What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video we're going to be setting up part two which is all the backend code. In the first video we had set up the interface and now we're going to make the dice interface actually work. How this is going to work is you're going to click the button roll and then it's going to just spit out two random dice faces for you to see. So you've made it to this point so why don't you guys just go ahead and, and help out the channel and click that subscribe button down below for more content like this. So without further ado let's just hop right into the video. All right, guys, here we are. We have our interface from last time, and now we need to change up the backend code to make the interface work. So how we're going to do that is we're just going to double click on the form here, open up the backend code. It's going to add this form one load method. We want to remove that right away so that we don't have that. Um, so click on the form in the interface, go to the little lightning symbol, and then just go ahead and highlight this, click delete, and erase that entirely. And in our code, all we can do now is go ahead and delete it so that we don't have it anymore. All right, the very first thing that we're gonna need is a random uh, generator to generate numbers. So we, we wanna generate uh, numbers one through six for each picture box, and then depending on the number, correspond the image with that number, right? So we have like, let's say we randomly generate number two. We want to load the number two image into the picture box for the user to see. Okay, so the very first thing up here is we're gonna say random dice equals new random so we go ahead we went ahead and uh created a random number generator and called the dice because we're rolling a dice right and that's all we really need for that part now the next thing that we need is we need to go ahead and create a method for the button so whenever the button is clicked we want to say okay do this in the background so go back to your interface and an easy way to do this is just go ahead and double click the button it will automatically add that button one click method for us, which is awesome. So the first thing that we need to make the interface work in this button method is when we click it, we want to generate two random numbers, correct? So we're going to say um, int random num one is equal to uh, dice, which is our random number generator from earlier. And we're going to access this dot next property. And dot next is going to say, hey, give me a random number right now. And if you were to just leave it like this, it would generate a, a, just a really random number. It could be huge, it could be small. But the cool thing is there are parameters in this method that we can give it a range of within that we want to actually uh, generate in between. So we want to generate numbers between one and seven. And the reason we do seven and not six is because that last part does not include uh, so the second number here is not included. So if we were to say six, it would only generate numbers one through five and not six. And we want to include six, so we need to bump it up one to seven. So we do that. And then the next thing that we need is another uh, random number. And if you know why, you are smart, but I will remind us why. It's because we have two, tick two picture boxes and we need two random numbers generated because if we were to just go off the one, we would load the same image every single time when we click the button, which we don't want. So let's go ahead and click one and seven again, and go ahead and save that. And now we have two randomly number or randomly generated numbers that are going to be different every time we click the button. So now what we want to do is switch it up. We want to literally add a switch statement because that would be so much easier than adding all these if statements. And that's exactly the perfect scenario for when a switch statement comes in so what we're going to do is say that switch on random num1 oops random num1 and this is what we're going to do so for those of you who may not have experience with a switch statement um, it's a great way to condense a bunch of if statements down into a smaller uh, section it's when you know you're going to have a lot of scenarios happening so we have six scenarios and we have 12 in all because we have 12 potential combinations for these random uh randomly generated numbers so inside of our switch statement we want to call a case so okay let's say so this is the variable that we're worried about and we want to say okay if it is equal to one do this and then if equal is if it's equal to two do that and so on so we're going to just say this and this is the syntax for and just add a break because every case is going to need a break. So give me just a second here to go ahead and add all the things in that we're going to need. 
So we have six total numbers, so we're going to need six cases in all. And we're going to need a break statement inside every single case. And then finally, we need the default case, which I, we'll probably never hit, but every switch statement, it's good to have one just in case. It's kind of like an error handling thing for your program. So in case, for whatever reason, these cases don't fire at all, there's a default scenario in which you always uh, rely on at the end. And what we're going to do for that is, let's say, for whatever reason, we don't generate a good number, we're just going to display 1. Which, like I said, you'll probably never see it, but the syntax for this is a little different, so it's default. And then you're going to need a break inside of here as well. Okay, so let's start at the top here. So we have case 1. Let's say we just generated the number 1. We want to do a few things. We want to display the number 1 image on the picture box 1. And we want to make sure that the image is uh, sized properly, like we did earlier in the other video. We stretch the image um, so that the entire thing fit inside the picture box rather than only seeing the top corner of it. And that's really all we need to do for each number in here. So first we're going to say picture box one dot image. So we're going to set the image of it. And we're going to say it's equal to the at sign and double quotes and then a semicolon. And the reason that I have it like this is because we're creating a string literal. And here, this is basically to say whatever is inside of these double quotes, just that is exactly what we mean. Because usually when you're, when you're specifying a file path, you have all these backslashes. And a backslash is an escape character. And rather than escaping every escape character... Um, it's kind of easier to just make it a literal. So what you need to do now is go and navigate to the file path of where you have all these images stored. So if you are if you happen to download them from my GitHub for this video, um, you might have them all in your downloads folder. I personally have them stored over here. I have this dice roller folder. So go ahead and just click up at the top here and you can copy the file path of the entire uh, directory. And we want to access all of these images right so what we need to do is go ahead and literally just paste it in here and then do slash and then make sure to remember the name of the image so this is case number one so we want to show the first uh or the number one dice image which is one dot png so then slash one dot png and that is all that we need for that one and guys i just realized i made a slight mistake instead of image it's actually image location because you're specifying the location that the image is at. So now that we've done that, we can now load the number one image in case we roll a one. The next thing, like I said earlier, is we're going to make sure that we need it uh, sized correctly. So to do that, we're gonna say dot size mode is equal to um, picture box size mode dot stretch image. So all that's doing is setting or saying that we're going to uh, condense the image down and stretch it inside of the size of the uh, picture box so that it fits. And that is literally all you need for each case in here. So an easy thing to do is copy and just paste inside every single uh, case here. And we, all, we only need to change the variables inside uh, each one as long as you name the images uh, nicely. So, so for like example number six, we want to uh, say we want to load six dot png and five dot png, four dot png, three and two and then and then one. And actually, whoops, I I messed it up a little bit. Uh, I forgot that we were, we had to handle the default case. So let me just quickly switch this stuff out. So the default case, like I said before, we're going to load the number one. So just set it to one. And now if we load our project just right now, we should only have the left side of the uh, roller working, and we still need to address the right side. So right now you'll notice every time you roll, the image on the left side actually changes, which is awesome. Um, now let's go ahead and work on the right side. So instead of doing that entire process again, we're going to be lazy, and we're just going to copy this and paste it right down below with our number two. So instead of random num1, we want to do random num2. And instead of picture box1 in every single case, we want to say picture box2. And an easy thing to do would just be to copy 
and paste every worry that you see picture box one and just replace it with a picture box two. So here we go. We can just replace all that stuff real quick. We don't really need to replace anything else. We've addressed all of our cases here. So I think that we are about done with this app. So let's go ahead and click start just to make sure. So we have welcome to dice roller. We have our good old um, two images here. So now every time that we click roll, we roll a brand new number on each one. They're individual and they don't like, they're not copied every time, right? But sometimes you can roll the exact same uh, hand on each one. So we see here, we, we rolled two fives. So with that said, thank you guys for uh, sticking around to this point of the tutorial. Hopefully you learned some stuff. Um, comment down any questions you have or anything that you get stuck on. I, I'd be glad to help. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one. <music>